Hey everybody, uh, this is Liat from How to Break That Game, and today we're going to go over the Rogue Meta Class. Uh, so, each of these Meta Classes has a number of different classes underneath it, bam, where you can have a variety of different choices, and each class plays in a uh, completely different way. Alright, so... What we're going to do is, first we're going to chat about each one and their playstyle. Uh, so, starting with, underneath Rogue, we have the class Rogue. Now, this is a, a very weird mix of everything. Uh, a lot of people say that Rogue doesn't know what it wants to be when it grows up, so it chooses not to do anything. But it is, is while well, some people say that it, it lacks focus, a lot of other people say that it, it has flexibility. So I would say that it's it's kind of like uh, a melee trapist ranged uh, hybrid of of things. No one single power or a tree of powers is going to carry the class. It it doesn't have as much uh, one note as a an archer does, where it just fires things uh, far off. And it's not like a berserker where you know you're running forward and you're hitting things. Instead, rogue has a lot of its potential split amongst many different trees. Uh, so one of the quintessential ones is throwing daggers. A rogue will have a, a bandolier of throwing daggers, and it will take and it will throw it at its at its enemies. This means that you have a limited use of uh, a ranged attack. But what where it becomes cool is some of the other abilities and how they interplay. Uh, so again, using off of a build that's quite popular right now. We'll say uh, there's a fan of blades, so you'll throw it, and it will have an AOE, and it will hit everybody within that for a certain amount. Now, this also this counts as a ranged attack, which means it will also uh, help proc uh, some poisons that you get from the poisons tree. So, one the build that I keep on alluding to is about throwing. Uh, throwing throwing daggers at people, poisoning them, and then getting the heck out of dodge. Now, I don't want to say that that's all that a rogue can do. It also has access to dirty fighting. It also has access to a bunch of different ways where you can uh, backstab people uh, for added damage. It also has access to a stealth tree. And if all of that wasn't enough, it has access to a trap tree, which uh, even has uh, lures, so you can lure people into your traps. My favorite one being the bear trap because it forces the, the mob to stop and stay right there. And then I can pelt him with a, a bow or my daggers or even run up and hit them. Something that's cool about the rogue is if you go all the way with, say, stealth. Uh, the way stealth works in this game is each round the enemy has to make a, a check to see if it can even see you. It is possible to push the rogue stealth so high that even the final bosses of the game cannot see you. So, if already, uh, when it comes down to stats, Rogue has uh, a skill that says, hey, instead of strength, uh, instead we're going to use cunning for damage. So, Rogue wants to max out cunning. So many of its skills uh, scale or unlock because of cunning. After that, I like to put it into dex. And then after that, I put it into a mix of uh, constitution or willpower for the benefits that they have there. Um, what's really cool about uh, having cunning and dexterity being the active stats is I will be able to critical hit things quite often. Now, how powerful is it? I'd say it's somewhere between a 2 and a 4. <coughs> um, it's really hard to say because there are times where I'm fighting an enemy and I use up all of my skills and he doesn't take much damage and then uh, the next round he dies. And that's just the way that, that poisons work. So at times, it seems very, very powerful. If you manage to land everything, it seems very, very powerful, but not immediately. And that's where the trickiness is. So if I were to say how, how sustainable is it, I'd have to say it's either a 1 or a 4. Uh, rogues are very active when it comes to defense. I say 1 because he's squishy as all get out. Um, I, I know that uh, they're... In the troll mire, there are several trees where you can just see the paste that was my rogue right over there. Thank you, Hedge Wizard. Um, uh, I can also say that it's a four, not because he can stay in combat so long as he's not seen. I do find a lot of my time that I'm I'm running away from people, but that's also you know 
I'm a rogue. That's what kind of what rogues do. Hide, stealth, and then go on. A, a little note here. Uh, if you're going stealth, you have to go complete stealth. There's no uh, halving it. You are either stealth and nobody sees you, or you are not stealth and people can see you. Uh, no in between, so... There's a lot of paths you can take the rogue, and one size does not fit all. So, if I were to say, uh, with a huge variety of different playstyles, you can play it in any way you want. The toolkit for all different styles means you have a lot of flexibility on how to build your character, if you want him to be melee, if you want him to be ranged. But it, I, if I were to ch flip that and say it in a different way, it can also be very difficult to settle on a build. That being said, you can be a kunai-throwing ninja, so... Take it for what it's worth. After that, we have the Shadow Blade. Uh, Shadow Blade is one that I personally like quite a bit. It is this kind of magic melee hybrid. Uh, it, think of it like a a rogue. Uh, he can backstab. He does a lot of damage, and he also uses illusions such as darkness magic to conceal himself. So even if people see him, well, now they they can't. Uh, if, so when we're talking about stats, uh, magic enough to unlock the skills, but after that I say dexterity, then to cunning for the same reason as a rogue. I want as many critical hits and as much critical hit damage as possible. And then I want to finish maxing out magic because some skills do uh, scale off of that. So if I were to say it's power, I'd say it's between a 4 and a 2. I, I purposefully went backwards on that one. Uh, four is because it has a lot of very powerful hits right off at the beginning. It's all burst damage. And then two, I don't like to stay there for very long, and I find I don't do a lot of damage in sustained combat, so I run away, uh, hide myself, and uh, suddenly I'm right there doing a burst of damage and then running again. At least that's the way that I played it. I know a lot of other people think that it's absolutely insane, so I highly suggest that everybody try out the Shadow Blade. It's really cool. You're an illusionary melee backstabber that no one can really see, and so if sneaking around and being tactical is the way you like to play, try this out. Speaking of that, for sustains, I'd say it's about 2, 2.5. Uh, he has some resource management issues. Uh, he does not uh, gain magic or MP back naturally, so you have to get that off of, off of an item. As far as how tactical, I'd say he's about a 3 or 4, because a lot of what I spent my time doing is finding the hardest target that I needed to take out, going in there, taking him out as, as fast as I can, dropping some crowd control, and then hiding so I could do it again. I, I personally enjoyed it quite a lot. So, the very uh, bursty playstyle means that encounters are going to be over very quickly. Uh, and what's cool about the Shadow Blade is there is a huge variety in ways that you can disable your opponents. So, if hiding and stealth is uh, the way you want to go, Shadow Blade is your person. Now, I know that a lot of Sh Shadow Blade has been updated in recent times, uh, along with the Anthril, which is another class that we'll get later. So, many of his skills that before took magic no longer take magic. Uh, so, I have yet to try it out since uh, those, those updates. Um, if anything, that would just make the Shadow Blade even more useful than it was before. All right, number three on our list, we have the Marauders. Uh, Marauder is a very cool class. The way I always think of it is uh, think of uh, a warrior in leather armor with two daggers who's able to hold himself to uh, go toe to toe with a paladin with a shield and a sword, or a crusader with uh, with a two handed weapon. If you ever like watching people who are fast and agile flipping over its opponents and killing them. Without being able to, without hit being hit, then the Marauder is your person. So, uh, as far as stats, I'd say strength and uh, and then cunning slash dexterity for again we want lots of critical hits. Strength because uh, that's where he does a lot of damage, and then finally willpower. Now, there's a couple of notes uh, on these stats. Uh, you may want to switch these up. Uh, one way that a lot of people like to go is they go to Zigger which is the anti-magic town, and where you can get training uh, using uh, mind stars. And mind stars improve your willpower, your mind power. 
And one of the training, once you unlock the tree, is Psy Blades. So you can project little Psy Blades, which count as weapons, which work well with the Marauder class. If you do that, you probably are going to want to have more willpower, because that's what mind power scales off of. Uh, I've heard that it's really fun. I haven't gone down that route, but it is something that tickles my imagination, so I know I'm going to want to. So, it's a very cool, very active uh, uh, playstyle. As far as power, I would say that it's a 3. Uh, the damage that you do is, uh, is a good bit, and it's very, very consistent. I can't say that it's going to have as high, the high highs of other classes, but it's also not going to be very, uh, very low. Because you're putting points into dexterity, you're going to hit very, very often, and there's a good chance that you're going to critical hit, so it becomes something that you can rely on. Uh, I, again, like I said, I personally like it. I say that it's an active uh, playstyle, and when we're talking about sustaining, it's it, it's somewhere between a 2 and, and a 4 on the scale of 5. Uh, 4, because uh, it, since it's so active, you pop all of your different buffs, then you go to town killing whatever you you're, you want to kill, and then the buffs go off and they're on cooldown. Uh, that's how you end up bursting with the Marauder, that's when you're going to do a lot of your damage. Uh, so once the buffs are off, then your sustainability, you're going to sit there at a 2. You can still hold your own, uh, but of course you're going to be working on, in high gear so long as you have those buffs. Um, and let's, let's face it, uh, with a solid end game numbers and the ability to take on the super bosses in the game, uh, this is a very powerful class that, in, that really shines in the end game, I, I, at least I feel. And, you know, everybody dreams about being a very powerful, dual-wielding, roguish fighter. And yeah, I mean, you. You do. You Admit it. Finally, the last one in the rogue meta class, we have Skirmishers, which is a very cool, very weird uh, niche. So, in the warrior tree, we had the archer, and one of the skill class trees you can go down is, is agility. It, it's built around... Uh, using slings instead of bows skirmisher is all about using uh all about using slings and a shield uh there's a lot of you can find some builds online i'm sure about using a uh, heavy plate armor uh, overall skirmisher works as kind of like a medium long range character it's uh, it's kind of hybridish you have a lot of single target control that you get end up getting to use uh, also, he attacks very, very, very quickly uh, at only uh, a percentage of the turn that everybody else does. So you can fire usually fire two or three shots off uh, before the other person may even get a turn, so long as you're not moving. Uh, as far as stats go, we're going to want to go with uh, dexterity, and uh, and after that, I usually like to go. I think I think about cunning, but usually I end up going strength or magic due to uh, prodigy choice. Um, and then Cunning is on par with those because all of my damage scales off of Cunning. As far as power, I'd say it's between a 2 and a 3 as far as power. It is very one note, and the range really does help the Skirmisher quite a bit. When we're talking about sustainability, I'd like to say it's a 3-5. Uh, the Skirmisher has different class uh, abilities that allow it to stay in combat. Things like... Um, a tireless combatant which constantly regenerates your stamina there's very few resource uh, resources that you're going to exhaust uh, very quickly unless you just keep on firing against a huge group of enemies so you'll have a bunch of abilities such as hey if there's somebody near you 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 hit them and they go fly and they go flying away allowing you to hit them some more as they try to close in on you it's it's a very weird, uh, neat, kind of dirty fighting uh, class. That's what it has the feeling for me. As far as how tactical is it going to be, uh, you have a lot of different ranged op options and debuffs, so I give it between a 3 and a 4. Uh, if there's a huge group of enemy, you don't uh, enemies, you don't want to get caught in the middle of it. But luckily, you're very agile, so you can vault over enemies uh, in order to escape. But a lot of it is, that guy is going to die. One, two, okay, and he's dead. That guy is going to die. Okay, one, two, headshot. Okay, now he's dead. Now that guy is going to... And so it, it's very methodical. Uh, it can be very powerful. It is a very uh, consistent class. Uh, at least that's how, how it feels to me. 
Uh, so it's easily one of the more tactical ranged classes. I'd say that even more so than the archer. Not because the archer doesn't have the tools for it. Uh, it it's more tactical because it has to be in order to uh, work on par. A lot of people say that a sling archer will uh, work just as well as uh, a skirmisher or be better at, at better than a skirmisher at using slings than a skirmisher, a class built around using slings in a shield. Um, for me, it tends to be a bit of a one-shot, uh, a one-trick shot pony, just like the archer. So uh, I go in and I would end up aggressively pressing one at people. I have a lot of neat abilities that can go off on, on different points when I need to use it, but overall I'm pressing one and I'm uh, killing people at the end of the game in much the same manner that I was killing them at the beginning of the game. Okay, uh, so I do want to say one thing with the Skirmisher. It does have a lot of bursts that it can do. There's a skill called uh, Kill Shot, which I have been able to easily surpass five-figure damage in a single round with, against a single opponent. So you don't have to worry about guys with huge health bars as a skirmisher, you do have the uh, the tool set to take them down. All right, so that's it for the rogue meta class. Again, uh, my name is Liot, and I'm here over at How to Break the Game. If you enjoyed this, or you found it helpful, or you have any suggestions on how to improve this, please uh, leave a comment below. Otherwise, like and subscribe to the channel. I'm going to be making an entire master series on a Tales of Majel, and I'd like to hear from you how I did. Thanks, guys.